and welcome to worship. Let us stand all over the congregation. Glory to his name, amen. Oh, down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where from cleansing from sin I cry. There to my heart was the blood applied, singing glory to his name. to worship this morning is coming from Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd and yeah. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul and he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy stare, they comfort me. Thou prepared the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Good morning again, Annie Yonkin. Let God be with us as he anoint this service today. Uh, we have our core selection at this time.
this time we will have our words of welcome from the pulpit by uh, Minister Cressetta Hurd. Hosanna. How many glad about Jesus this morning? Oh, hallelujah. When you think about the good things that God has done, make you just want to shout and lose your mind. Because he's been a mighty good, good, good God. Amen. Hallelujah. I wouldn't serve nobody else. But I'm up here to do something else. I'm up here. If you are here at the Antioch Baptist Church this morning and you find yourself in the spot of being a guest, would you stand and let us know where you're from and uh, so we can celebrate you? Breast to breast, cheek to cheek family. We good. And that's a great thing, but still, because you're so special, I still want you to know that on behalf of the Reverend Dr. Eugene Beverly and the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, you are welcome. Our arms are stretched wide to receive you. And we declare and decree, you ain't gonna leave here like you can. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Because this is the church that reaches out. We're the temple where people come for healing. And we're here to do that. So we sing it this morning. Stand on up and sing with us. The words are on the screen. Come on and help us sing. Followed by the pulpit's rem uh, remarks. Amen. 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 These are the announcements for today. Our Easter egg hunt will be this coming Saturday, which is the 30th at 3 p.m. We're reminding and asking each ministry to please donate two dozen of hard boiled and dyed eggs and two large bags of individually wrapped candies for our Easter egg hunt. These items can be dropped off here at the church from 10 to 5 on this Friday, which is Good Friday, and from 10 to 1 on this Saturday, which is the day of the egg hunt, and it's also Easter Eve. We thank you very much for that, and to those ministries and persons who've already donated, we thank you very much. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Resurrection Day, yeah. hallelujah. And we will have Easter sunrise service at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. Following the Easter sunrise service, we will have Easter Sunday breakfast. Mm -hmm. And that's hosted and served by our very own trustee ministry. Yes. Following that, we will have the Sunday school Easter activity. That'll be at 9. And then the Easter Sunday morning worship, which is at 10, 15. We urge and encourage you to be present. Just to give you a little information on the greenery that you're wearing this morning, Palm Sunday, which is today, celebrates the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem. You can find that in Matthew 21, verses 1 through 9. Here at Antioch, we use this greenery to represent the palm branches that the crowd scattered in front of Christ as he rode into Jerusalem. This was before his arrest on Holy Thursday and before his crucifixion on Good Friday. 
and of course, before his resurrection on Easter Sunday morning. Early. Early. Yes, sir. I like early. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. Early. Hallelujah. It represents Hallelujah. the beginning of Holy Week, and that is, Holy Week is the final week of Lent. And that's pretty much what I have for you this morning. There will be other announcements from the pulpit. We ask always that you remember our sick and shut-in and bereaved and keep them in your prayers during your prayer time. And we're going to ask at this point the special announcement by Team Tate if they'll get ready to come. But before they do, I'd like to leave you with this. What if? What if we began to treat our Bibles like we treat our cell phones. All right now. What if we carried it with us everywhere? Yeah. What if we turned back to get it if we forgot it? Okay, okay, okay. What if we checked it for messages Come throughout on. the day? Come on. What if we used it in All case right, of emergency? All right, well. What if we spent an hour or more each day reading it? Messages, okay. using it. Okay. Come on now. What if? What if? What if? We treat our Bibles like we do our cell phones. All right, Tim Tate. Come on. Thank you. celebration time as we celebrate our 146th, Amen. 46th church anniversary. Amen. This will be on Sunday, April the 7th at 2.30 p.m. Our guest speaker will be the Reverend Carlton Howard. All right. All right. Our scripture will be Psalms 146 verses 1 through 2. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise to my yeah. God as long as I live. Yeah. And our theme will be, let everything Come that on. has breath Come on, praise, him. praise the yeah. Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yes, yes. All right. We are asking each member to make a sacrificial offering of $146. For those of you who can't, please pay what you can. You can pay or give, just like I said last Sunday, 146 quarters, 146 dimes, 146 nickels. I did put in 146 pennies for the kids. All right. Dinner will be served on the grounds. Right. We are asking each ministry to sponsor a table or two. If you are not in this ministry, you can sponsor a table as a family. So please sign up in the vestibule. You will see this green sheet. Miss Nisha, please stand. She will be responsible for the sign up sheet, please. So everybody, please sign up for we can have lots of food to eat. And our colors will be red and white. We also will be doing memorial ads. The whole page, $100. Half page, $50. One fourth page, $25. Or the patrons list, $5. So please see Dick and Mac on this. Stand up, Dick and Mac. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. 
because the deadline will be next Sunday, because everybody knows East, I meant the anniversary is the first Sunday. <laughs> okay? If we call on you or ask you to do something, please don't hesitate to say yes. Thank you. And then, again, we had added some things coming up to the anniversary. Like, we will have movie night on Friday, April the 6th, from 6 to 8 p.m. So we're asking everybody to come. It will be a Christian movie. We will have popcorn, hot dogs, etc. And on Saturday, April the 7th, we will have game day from 12 to 3 p.m. So if you want to play some games like bingo, play some spades, <laughs> Uno for the kids, or board games, please see Sister Elliot, please. We do have some good spades players, but Brantley said I'm not one of them, but it's okay. So that will be all, so everybody, we just gonna praise the Lord on the first, celebrate on the, for the church anniversary, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Amen, amen. I'm um, just to cover a few uh, of the announcements once again um, and to remind that Sunday school um, and Bible study, um, we had a lot of ringing um, in this. If y'all could work on that just a little bit. Jamie, I'm gonna ask you to go back there and help them out with that or however you wanna do it. Yeah. Uh, so Sunday school, remember Sunday school is still going on. It's still a wonderful um, Sunday school lesson that we have and that we're doing. And um, so please come out to Sunday school at nine o'clock in the morning. Um, yeah, and uh, midday Bible studies on Wednesday. The women are doing a fantastic job of that and that's open to everybody, everybody. And then, of course, on Wednesday afternoon, we have the men's uh, Bible study at 6 p.m., and then they trickle over into the, um, the, the uh, church Bible study on Wednesday afternoons. We're in the book 1 Corinthians. We're in the book 1 Corinthians. Children's churches today, um, immediately right after, uh, we have our, our altar call. The children will be heading over to Children's Church and that's ages four up until 10. Please make sure your children are making it to Children's Church where they can get their teaching done as well. Uh, we say some things in the pulpit we're preaching on, on Sunday morning. I know it probably goes right over the kid's head. We got to make sure that they are trained and trained well. So make sure that your kids go over to Children's Church as well. Um, let's see what else we have here. Oh, oh, let me tell you, on yesterday, on yesterday morning, the lady, the ladies of the church had their prayer breakfast. Y'all, ladies, y'all stand. All that was in attendance for that, y'all go and stand up. Who was here for that? Okay. A, 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 amen. Amen. Let me tell you, um, ladies, uh, you all that uh, were not in attendance, y'all missed a prayer breakfast beyond a prayer breakfast. Uh, Sister Maggie McDonald, Reverend Maggie McDonald, she came and she delivered well. Uh, the prayer was, was just amazing, outstanding, touched many souls. I believe the women had a fantastic time. So ladies, whenever y'all put on another one, make sure that y'all gather everybody that you can. And I'm going to do like I did the last time. I'm going to sit over in my office, keep my door open, and I heard every word. Amen. Amen. Uh, this is um, uh, Kidney, March's Kidney Health Awareness Month, and they're doing blood pressures immediately after worship on today. Also, after worship today, please, 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 uh, if you would join me and the choir and church, just everybody come over to Coming Grove as we celebrate their 184th anniversary. That's at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Please come. If you don't know how to get there, just meet, some, meet us here and we'll get you over there. But please come over to Coming Grove uh, at 2 p.m. today so we can help them to celebrate uh, 184 years of giving praise unto our Lord, until our Savior Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Amen. Good Friday service is at 12 noon here. The Baptist Ministers Conference of Augusta is sponsoring Good Friday service here at 12 noon. There will be communion served as well. Now, I know this is a lot. I know this is a lot. But also on Friday afternoon, we have our Seder meal or the Passover meal. If you have not experienced that, and it's been a little while since we've done that. If you have not experienced the Passover meal, please come out and be a part of that as we actually reenact history in itself. Not a fairy tale, but we reenact history in itself on the Seder meal. Uh, moving right along, our 146th anniversary. Thank you. We're going to celebrate. Amen. Yes, we're going yes. to celebrate. Yes. Uh, the following week after that, April 15th and April 16th is Antioch's uh, revival. Uh, on April 15th, we have uh, the Reverend Albert James and the Second Providence Church is going to come and join us and worship with us uh, in revival. Amen. Please come out and celebrate that with us. I do not want to look up and then see all of Second Providence in about two of Antioch. Oh. Then on April 16th, uh, the Reverend Vivian Hamrick is coming from Live River, and she's a powerhouse of a speaker as well. She's going to come and share with us. I, uh, uh, also, we have many on our prayer request list, our sick and shut in. I just want to lift up two names right now. That's Sister Karen. Karen had her surgery done, and she's uh, in a regular room now, so she is uh, in recovery and doing well from the last word I got from her husband. And then also Sister Regina Freeman had her surgery, and I believe she's at home, and she's recovering well as well. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that. Um, let's see here. Two more things I think I still have. One, uh, Jamie, if you're still back there, kind of step inside the sanctuary for a minute. Jamie, step inside the sanctuary for a minute, please. Jamie, get close to your wife over there. Her name is Katrina. Just, just, just go, just get close to her. Katrina, would you stand to your feet, please? Amen. Let's give them a hand clap of encouragement. Let, 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 me, let me tell you. So Jamie, of course, is our sound man. He's an audiovisual back there in the back, and, and, and he's working, and he's doing his thing. But to his right, and his, his, his good thing, his better thing, Katrina has now taken on uh, uh, ownership of our Facebook page. And so now we're having up-to-date, outstanding, fantastic Facebook page that you can go on and catch up on all the news that we have. And I just wanted to highlight the up and coming power couple in the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. That's right, that's right, that's right. Uh, uh, coming soon, I'm not sure if we have it ready yet, but you're, uh, you'll be able to QR code. There's a QR code for our Facebook page. We got it? And so all we got to do now, don't have to worry about typing in Antioch and all that, and 15 other churches come up. You just go straight to your QR, and it brings Antioch up right off the top. Amen? That's, that's, that's Katrina. Yeah. Amen. Thank y'all so much. Um, one last thing, I'm going to issue out a challenge. Somebody says challenge. I'm going to issue out a challenge that I believe, I truly believe, that if we have a cornhole toss, toss, you know, tossing, you know, the bean bags, I truly believe that if the ministers were playing against any other organization in this church, why y'all getting all so sad? Don't get sad now. Just like in bowling. But if the ministers was tossing, that's all I gotta say. I ain't gotta say no more, because you know what, you know what the end result gonna be. So we're gonna get out the cornhole toss and then y'all with me? Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. What? 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 Start. They always got one. Amen, 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 amen. Uh, musicians, tra transition me quick. 
Or either somebody gonna start my, or somebody gonna start my car. Hold. Oh, yeah, we got. Oh my goodness. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's oh, that's Connie number two. She's also my second brain because this one right here I don't have it all. So Connie is my second brain. We want to do. We want to honor some folks. So uh, Michaela, where art thou? Okay, there you go. All right, give her a hand, cup of encouragement. Yeah. Amen. So let me tell you a little bit about this young lady here by the name of Michaela. Michaela uh, and her uh, group at A.R. Johnson took not second place. They didn't take third place. They didn't take fourth place. So there's only one other place they can take. That is first place in the Richmond County Middle School math competition. First place. Amen, amen. Stay, I, I keep standing because I got one more thing to say, and this is specific. The letter says, congratulations. Your child, not somebody else's child, but your child has qualified for participation in the Richmond County School System gifted program. She qualifies for all of the accelerated academic and creative enrichment programs that they have. In other words, we got it going on in the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church on the corner of Florence Street and the Russell Avenue. We got it going on over here. That's how we do stuff over here. Amen, 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 amen. I'm not going to ask you, um, or I'm going to give them to you. I I'll give them to you. I'm going to ask that if, if Sister Dolores Mitchell would stand and keep standing. Oh, yeah. Sister Pauline Holloway, if you would stand and keep standing. Sister Shirley B. Williams, if you would stand, would you stand and keep standing? Sister Jeanette Hawkins, if you would stand and keep standing. Brother Sam Hickson, if you would stand and keep standing. Sister Ruby Chambers, if you would stand and keep standing. Brother Dix, if you would stand, well, Gaynell Dix, my brother Gaynell Dix, if you would stand and keep standing. And not to leave you out, Reginald Dix, if you would stand and keep standing. Brother Johnny, N Johnny Nelly, Deacon Nelly, if you would stand. Uh, Sister Mary Gord, George, if you would stand. Uh, Sister Naylor, if you would stand and keep standing. Brother Carl Carey, if you hear me stand, keep standing. And Brother Walter Mack, if you would stand and keep standing. Amen. This, this is certificates that we're giving out for those who came and attended our grief seminar that was, def that was conducted by Chaplain Paul, uh, he came and he conducted a grief seminar that will help us be able to deal uh, more with our family as we go through things within the church. And there's more training to be done. And the next training that we do have, we're asking that you come out and be a part of that training. Amen? Amen. Amen. You may take your seats. Amen. Amen. Now, if Deacon Naylor will come, and then we will proceed after that. Good morning again, church. It occurred to me that when Reverend Beverly first came to me and said he wanted to set aside March as a month of evangelism emphasis, that I never thank him for it. So I thank you, Pastor Beverly, for setting aside March as evangelism, for evangelism em emphasis. And uh, you've truly shown that you're a man with a heart for evangelism and soul winning. And we thank you for that. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. On previous Sundays, we talked about know your role, knowing that our role is to just be used of God to, to pass his word along, to, to be, to be uh, 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 the Great Commission talkers and 
and spreaders of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but we don't do anything except be used as a tool, but the Holy Spirit does the saving. The Holy Spirit does the convicting. The Holy Spirit is where the power comes from, not from us. And I also said to know your opportunity. God places people in front of us every day that we could uh, share Christ with, and we have to realize and be sensitive to those uh, opportunities uh, because he, he, continue, he will continue to do that. And said, know your audience. And we all have a sphere of influence every day for people that we're around, day in and day out. Sometimes they're the same people, day in and day out. So we do have an audience. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about what do I do. We talked about the, 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 the know your role and the know your opportunity and know your audience. But what do we do? The Bible teaches us that we should always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks uh, uh, you to give a reason for the hope that is that you have. People seldom come to Christ through arguments and debates. Instead, they're often won by discovering who Jesus really is and the difference he can make in their lives. One of the best ways to share your faith and point others to Jesus is to live a godly life. Show those close to you that you care. Spend time with them. Help them meet their needs and and offer to listen when they have problems. You might not be able to answer their questions, but you can't not deny the reality of what Christ has done in your life. If you find this hard to do, perhaps God is speaking to you about it, so listen, be attentive. Also, make it a habit of reading the Bible, praying, going to church. These things should be done not for attention, but for the sake of, or for the sake of doing them, but to help you grow in your own faith. Your passion for Christ will help others see that there is something different about you, and they'll want to know what it is. And you can also reflect Christ through kind words, patience, and gentle temperament, love, and respect. And uh, you, you can be evidence of God's love uh, to those around you. So these are the things that we can do, we can be. Um, but we can't be it unless it becomes real in our lives. So if we are not like that, we should be praying that we are like that. And when I say that, we need to be more like Jesus Christ. We're praying that we're going to be Christ-like in everything that we are and everything that we do. So how do we know uh, what's, what is Christ-like? Well, we have to study, study the Word and, and pray and allow the Holy Spirit to move in our hearts and minds. And as usual, as the previous Sundays and this March, uh, I'm going to get you to sincerely repeat this prayer after me. This might be your first time hearing us. This might be your, your first Sunday being here in March, or you may have be, been here before, and you're still concerned and, and wondering about where you would wind up if you were to die today, or where will you wind up tomorrow. We need to be sure of our salvation. We need to know that heaven is our home. And one way we can do that is by accepting Jesus Christ with the most sincerity we know how. And I'm going to ask you to... Follow me in this prayer as I lead you in this prayer right now. Dear Jesus, I know that I have sinned because we've all sinned and fallen short of your glory. But right now, Jesus, I open the door to my heart and I invite you in. I accept the free gift of salvation that you're offering to me. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And on the third day, you got up with all power in your hands. And right now, Jesus, you're in heaven on the right side of the throne of God, preparing a place for me. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for these, your people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad. Amen. Amen. As we continue to move forward in our worship service, it is now offering time, a time where we can give back to God a portion of what he's blessed us with. Yes. We all have something to be thankful for, yes. and we all are blessed in spite of what it looks like, in spite of what it feels like, in spite of what's going on. Instead of focusing on what's going wrong, Focus on who's in charge, that is our Father, amen? 
So at this time, will everybody please stand as our trustees will come forward and our leaders will lead the way. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we pause right now, dear Father, giving you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Yeah. Father, we thank you for this day and all your wondrous works. We pray, Father, that right now that you accept this small portion of what you have blessed us with, allow it to grow, Father, and uplift, and uplift, and uplift your kingdom. Yeah. This and all blessings we ask in your loving son's name, yeah. Jesus the Christ. Amen. Give our ushers a hand clap of encouragement. There is so many things that uh, we needed to go over, and I, I inadvertently missed two of them. I know there was a lot, but I don't want to miss anything, especially anything that has to do with our youth. Um, two things. I did get two um, um, report cards. Um, this morning from um, Michael James Harris and then also from London Scholar Grace and these report cards look awesome so on next Sunday please make sure that you see your pastor you do not want to leave without seeing him as a matter of fact you should see him before you leave today let's not wait until next Sunday so listen make sure you see your pastor on today before you leave amen 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 so anybody else who wants to add in on a blessing with you, you're, you're free to do so, but it's going to come from me, period, as they say, period, T, and stuff. So that's how that goes. Um, listen, one other, uh, Michaela, uh, if you are ready, that if you can give your presentation uh, this morning on uh, our, our women's history, and then following that, we will go into our altar call. Today, our Women of Women History Month is Kamala Harris. 
Kamala Harris, born October 20th, 1964, is an American politician and attorney who is the 49th and current Vice President of the United States under President Joe Biden. She is the first female Vice President and the highest ranking female official in U.S. history, as well as the first African American and first Asian American Vice President. A member of the Democratic Par Party, she was previously a Attorney General of California from 2011 to 2017 and a U.S. Senator from California from 2017 to 2021. Born in Oakland, born in Oakland, California, Harris graduated from Howard University and the University of California Hastings College, College of Law. She began her career in the office of the District Attorney DA of Alameda County before she, being recruited to the San Francisco DA office and later the city attorney of San Francisco office. In 2003, she was elected DA of San Francisco. She was elected AG of California in 2010 and reelected in 2014. Harris served as the junior U.S. Senator from California from 2017 to 2021. She defeated Loretta Sanchez in the 2016 Senate election to become the second African American woman and the first South Asian Afri African American woman to serve in the U.S. Senate. As a senator, she advocated for health care reform, federal descheduling of cannabis, a path of citizenship for undocumented immigrants, the DREAM Act, and strict gun control laws and progressive tax reform. She gained a national profile for pointed questioning of Trump administration officials during Senate hearings, including Trump's second Supreme Court nominee. Harris sought the 2020 Democratic Democratic presidential nomination, but withdrew from the race prior to the primaries. She was selected by Joe Biden to be his running mate, and their ticket went on to defeat the then incumbent president and vice president, Donald Trump and Mike Pence in 2020 election. Harris and Biden were put in January 20, 2021. Amen, amen, amen. It's prayer time. It's prayer time. Yes. If you stand all over the building. My, 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 my. prayer time. All over the building, would you join us at the altar? All over the building, would you come and join us at the altar? I need the old. I need the Just do that just one more time. I need the old, I need the yes, Lord. Yeah. 
Withdraw thyself from me, O oh, whether shall I go. Lord, we just thank you for this day. Thank you for this hour. We thank you for this opportune time for us to come to this place called Antioch, where they was first called Christians, Father. We thank you, Father God, for just waking us up this morning, Father God, and touching us with a finger touch of love. We thank you, Father God, for your agape love, your unconditional love, Father, because God, a lot of us have did wrong, but God, because of your grace and your mercy, we're still here in the number one more time. And we thank you, God. We know, Father God, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But because of the blood that was shed for us on Calvary, we all been cleansed and we all been redeemed. As Father God, as we prepare for Resurrection Week, we thank you, God. We, we do realize, God, that that should have been us on that cross. But, God, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. But, God, we continue to look to the hills from where all our help comes from, and we continue to hold on to your unchanging hand. And we know, Father God, that everything is going to be all right. There are so many here this morning, Father God. Many have come, but there's still room. And we thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for just keeping us. We thank you, Father God, for just strengthening us. We thank you, Father God, for just helping us to hold on when we didn't feel like it. There are a lot of us here this morning, Father God, dealing with situations unknown. And it seems like we don't have an answer. But God, we know that you are the answer. You are Alpha and Omega. We know that all things must come through you, Father God, and you, don't, you do not allow nothing to happen to us that we know, that you know, that we know, that you know, that we know, but you know that everything is going to be all right. And we know, Father God, that you will never put no more on us than we can bear. We know, Father God, that they crucified you and hung you on that old rugged cross. So, we ourselves are going to be crucified. But your word tells us, be of good cheer. And so, God, this morning, we are of good cheer because we know who we are and whose we are. And we know that everything is going to be all right. Your word tells us that you will never leave us and you will never forsake us. And we know, Father God, that we are kings and queens. We are prince and princess this morning, Father God. We know, Father God, that you sit high and look low. And we know, Father God, that everything is going to be all right. There are some that's hurting. There are some that's dealing with physical ailments. There are some dealing with mental illness. There are some dealing with emotional, even spiritual, Father God. But God, we know you got it. We know that you can do all things except fail. And there is nothing too hard for our God. I ask that, Father God, this morning, you continue to keep our youth, Father God, as they are our future. Let us be that beacon of light to them, Father God. Let us show them the right way. Let us be able to go out to a sin-sick world and say, because our Savior lives, we can all face tomorrow. We ask that, Father God, you go by the nursing homes this morning. We ask that you go by the the sick beds. We ask that you go by the hospitals, Father God. And we ask, Father God, you just make whatever's wrong, make it all right. We know that one word, one word from you can change. You can change everything. We know that one touch from you, 
that you can change it, Father God. We ask that this morning, Father God, you just make your hem or garment available to us. Make it available, Father God. Open up the windows of heaven and pour out that blessing that's needed, Father God. We know, Father God, that we're fighting a, a war. We're in a world, but we know, Father God, we're not of this world. Because, Father God, we are of you. As, Father God, as we continue to focus on you and your word, Father God, as we continue to study and show ourselves approved, as we continue to pray and ask that, God, you just cleanse us up on the inside. Because, Father God, it's what's on the inside that's going to help us. And, Father God, when it's all said and done, we want to make sure, God, that we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Let us say amen. 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 Can we just worship him? Can we just worship him? Just worship him just one more. Thank you. Would you lift your hands and just worship him? Thank him for all that he's done for you.
of mine is gratefulness. Yes. Yes. Is gratefulness. Every once in a while, we want to just take time out to worship Him. There's a song that says, I choose to worship. My mind is made up. I choose to worship Him. I just can't give up. I choose to worship him. Does anybody choose to worship God? The song says, thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sin and shame, in love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail-pierced hand. Ah, washed me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know is your forgiveness and embrace. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for the cross. And we just want to thank him because he's a worthy God. Worthy is the Lamb. Amen.
yeah, 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 yeah. You're so worthy, Lord. You're so worthy. You that lamb that saved me. Hallelujah. Just stay right there. He's worthy. Worthy to be praised. I'm doing. I'm just going to ask. I'm going to ask if you would. Let's bring the music down real low. Let's bring it real low. I'm going to ask that you relinquish everything from your mind. Except Jesus. I'm going to ask that you just think back over where he has brought you from. <laughs> oh, just think where he's brought you from. Not last year, not five years ago, but just think about where he's brought you from on yesterday. Think about how he has kept you from hurt, harm, and danger. He's worthy. He's worthy of the praise. And, 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 I, and I know I'm taking you on a musical journey. It, it, it's okay. But in my mind, I'm still saying to myself that I choose to worship. I choose to worship him. I choose to worship. Anybody else? Maybe you don't have anything to worship him for, but for me, I choose to worship. Maybe he's ever brought you through anything, but for me, I choose to worship. You know why? This is why. He's healing me. I choose, I choose to worship. I don't know about you. Oh, I might as well just tell you. He's healing me. I choose to worship. Anybody else? Has he ever healed you? He's healing me. And I choose to worship. Has he brought you through anything? He's healing me. I choose to worship. Yeah, yeah. He's healing me. I choose to worship. Can you just worship him right now? Tell him thank you. He's choosing me. I choose, I choose to worship. I choose, I choose to worship. Oh, that's it right there. I choose. 
go back. I can't change my mind. I simply choose. I choose to worship. Last time. I choose to worship. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. On this day, we might ought to choose to worship him. We don't want to play around anymore and act like we're holy. I'm just trying to get us to a place where we are holy. If you have your Bibles with you, I know there are Bibles in the pew. Turn to the book of Mark, chapter 11. 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 When you have it, stand to your feet, verses 1 through 11. Mark, chapter 11, and verses 1 through 11. I choose to worship you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can't give up. Uh, no, no. My mind is made up. I choose, I choose. to worship you. Yes, you don't have to ask me, give me a, a question or a test or anything. It's I choose I to worship choose. him. Yes. For all that he's done for me, I choose to do it. If you have it, please stand to your feet. It, it reads like this. It says, and when they come nigh or near to Jerusalem unto Bethphage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sendeth forth two disciples. And he said unto them, go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as ye enter into it, you find a coat tied, whereupon a man has never sat. Loose him and bring him. And if any man say to you, why do you, why do ye do this? Say ye that the Lord have need of him. And straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way and they found a coat tied by the door without a place, uh, 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 without, without in a place where two ways met. And they loose him. And certain of them stood there and said unto them, What do you loosing this colt? And they said unto him, Even as Jesus had commanded. And they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and cast their garments on him. And he sat upon it. And many spread their garment along the way and others cut down branches off the trees and threw them in the way. Verse 9 says, And they that went before and they that followed cried, Hosanna! Blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the highest. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked round about all things, it was now eventide, it was come. He went out into Bethany with the twelve. So reads the word of God for his people, the hearers and the doers of his word. Amen. You may take your seats. If there's a title that we must have, the titles simply say humble, humility, and healing. Here comes the king. Humble, humility, and healing. Here comes the king. 
Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you once again for bringing us to another Sunday to study your word. And Father, to just have a conversation that exposes you to us, that we may love you even more. We ask now that you set Gene Beverly down on the front row and minister to him as he ministered to your people, Father, not his. I'm asking right now that you, oh my God, that you would decrease me, Father. Empty me of all that I am. Make me a complete empty vessel, Father, and that every word, every utterance, every groan, every moan, everything that comes out of this body of clay be uplifting to you. Father, we give you praise right now and we thank you in advance. We thank you in advance, Father. In Jesus' name do we pray, amen and amen. Here we are in this book of Mark, and it's verse 9 that I want to pay particular attention to as we go on in this. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. This verse says to the reader, and uh, as, as our ushers take their seat, give them a hand clap of encouragement. They've been standing all morning. Amen. Ushers, you're doing good. The verse says to the reader, uh, this ninth verse, says that they know who this is that came in riding on this colt. And, and so they, here we are, we, we, we see this in the scripture, that they're standing on the streets of Jerusalem filled with men, women, and children. And if you would picture in your mind, uh, here is Jesus coming into Jerusalem, riding on the back of a colt that has never been ridden before. And if you know anything about animals, if you have not ridden one before, uh, that's a miracle in itself. And if we were to look at this passage and just from reading just the reading of it, it is a simple passage. It's simple enough to understand, they say, that here comes Jesus riding on a colt. But the people knew of him, and it is plainly stated they call uh, him Hosanna. It's, it's just as simple as that Jesus is simply riding in on a cold. And, and yes, some people heard that he was coming, uh, and they formed a, a little mini parade in the streets, crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna. I, I believe some had heard of the miracles that he had performed, and there was no doubt that some of the people probably was lining the streets in hope that maybe they themselves would get a miracle thrown their way. I'm sure that by word of mouth, many had gotten the essence of his miracles twisted. And by the time it reached their ears, things changed. Picture how the word had gotten to the people of Jerusalem. I can hear the conversation now as the word flowed into Jerusalem. Yeah, child. Old blind dude. You know who I'm talking about. The one that's been blind since I don't know. Bartimaeus. Yeah, I heard that dude. I heard that Jesus threw a handkerchief his way and put oil on it and the dude starts seeing it. That's how it flowed their way. That's what maybe they've heard. Yeah, I heard that. And, and, and I've got my handkerchief right here. I'm ready for him to come my way. The word got out and the people were lying in the streets waiting on Jesus just to do something for them. And it's like that on today as well. We, we do the same thing. We hear that a store in the mall is having a sale. You buy one pair and get two pair free. A good deal, but by the time the story gets down to you, is go to the mall, get, get two pair. If you can get there, buy three. So we rush down to the mall hoping to get a pair of brand new shoes. I'm, I'm sure, I'm well assured that they lined the streets hoping for a miracle to be thrown their way as though it was a Mardi Gras parade. Can't you imagine in their minds, they're lying in the streets and they're laying down palm branches, they're laying down their garments and they're waiting on this Jesus to come through. They're lying in the streets thinking that they know this king that came riding in on a colt. But I wonder how many were disappointed when they saw the king coming in riding on the back of a donkey. How many were whispering to themselves, is this the one? Y'all right, right. been talking, is, is he the one? He's on a cold. Is, is really that the one? And if we simply were going to tell the story in its most simplistic form, that's all that would need be said. 
He came in riding on the back of a donkey. But I believe the story is much more compelling. I believe that the story is much more challenging. It's much more visceral and it is much more compassionate. Here is Jesus. And you have to understand he's coming to the conclusion of his earthly mission. And the task of fulfilling the prophecy is coming quickly. There upon the colt said, uh, and this parade figure here that sat upon the colt was not just any man because he was a divine man. He was a hundred percent man, but he was also a hundred percent God. And I, I believe that if you really look upon who this was that, that was coming in riding on the back of a colt, you could see at least three things. You can see humbleness. You can see humility. And you would soon find out his healing. Upon this cult said a child that was born in a manger. A child not born in the towers of a king or the suburb of some Pharisee or Sadducee. Yes, here was a child born in the humbleness of an animal stall wrapped in pieces of cloth to keep him warm. Can you imagine any politician running for office explaining how he was born in a barn? Can you imagine even this president being humbled? With such beginnings. Can you imagine even Prince William being born in a manger? Can you imagine during this time of his birth that Joseph and Mary were traveling great distances to get to their home over rough and drag and, and jagged terrain? Can't you see Mary riding on the back of maybe a cart? Maybe even she was sitting upon a donkey pregnant and about to deliver her child. Can you imagine Mary thinking to herself that God has chose me? And here is Joseph trying his best to comfort his wife, watching every pothole, watching every curve in the road to protect his wife and Mary being held by her husband, reassuring her that everything is going to be alright baby, every, everything's going to be alright, just, just stay just hanging, everything's going to be alright and Joseph now looking for a place that he can take his wife to, to give birth to his child and can't find a place and they're regulated to a stall, an animal stall. He was born into humbleness. He came in a humble state of existence. He had nothing upon his arrival that was any worth any earthly wealth. He was poor from his existence and humble was his calling. The Bible states that Jesus was a humble servant. Humble in that he came as a servant not to be ministered to, but to minister to those of a broken heart and a broken spirit. He came not lifting himself above, but allowing himself to be in a humble state of existence. It, this is what I did. I did this. I started looking for the bragging rights of Jesus. I, I, I look for bragging Jesus, and, and, and this is what I found. I found in all my reading, I didn't find Jesus boasting about anything. I didn't find Jesus boasting about healing of the blind. In all my reading, I didn't find Jesus doing a high five when he healed the woman with an issue of blood. I didn't find that in there. In all of my reading, I didn't find Jesus uh, where he had sent this medicinal article into the American Medical Association describing with just one touch, he healed the leper. In all my reading, I've been searching. I didn't find where Jesus, when he turned water into wine, I didn't find him bragging. In all my reading, I didn't find what Jesus was bragging that he fed the whole church. Women and children. Well, 5,000 plus, two fish, five loaves of bread. I'm just thinking how many of y'all can feed 5,000 with two fish, five loaves of bread. For some of y'all, that's just half a meal just for yourself. 
And all my reading, I didn't find anywhere where Jesus was carrying signs saying, I can read the future. But what I did read was a humble nature of Jesus. I did read that he gave his all. I didn't find him with a big house or, or anything like that. As a matter of fact, I, what I found was that birds had a place to lay. But Christ had no place to rest his head. Look, look, look. In, in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, it says, Jesus was rich. Yet for your sake he became poor so that by his poverty you might become rich. I did read over in Philippians 2 and 8 it states, and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient. Obedient to what, preacher? What did he become obedient to? He became obedient even unto death. Even the death on the cross. Who was this king that came riding through the streets on the back of a donkey? He was humble. And can you imagine what Christ would have wrote in to Antioch on? Can you imagine how Christ would have showed up for church on today? Not just any church. We're talking about Antioch on the corner of Florence Street and Augusta Avenue. How would Christ have arrived at the church today? I shudder to think that possibly maybe we could have turned Christ away. Because here he is on a donkey and we don't know that there, uh, there was some, and we do know there was some in the crowd who were saying, this is the Jesus that they talking about? Surely it couldn't be him. And if you were to tell the story that he is a king riding on a donkey, we might miss the essence of who Jesus is. His humility was in his meekness and the lowness and how he carried himself. But more importantly, his humility was in his heart. Humility was found in the recesses of the heart uh, 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 to, to, to feed and not the need of yourself. But to feel and to feed the need of others. You can reason it out to be the essence of compassion. Humility is that compassion that you feel deep down on the innermost part of yourself. Uh, uh, that is not for you to hold, but is there for you to uplift, to feel the, the, the hurt of others and, and to feed and the need of others. Humility, it, it empties yourself, not for yourself, but for others. Put down that we might ought to do a self-check on our humility. Every once in a while, we ought to check ourselves to see if we're living this compassionate life that we brag about. We need to check some time to see if we truly have humility in our own hearts. We know that life can be challenging, and sometimes it can come, it can come against you. Uh, uh, you get lost in the day-to-day -day, uh, activities and tasks and not understanding that busyness will strip you of your compassion. Let me say that again. You can be so busy that it will strip you of your compassion for others. You ought to check sometimes to just show up and to wonder whether or not humility uh, towards others are deep in our heart. We ought to do a self-check. You ever did a self-check? We go to the doctor every year to get physicals on our body, but I believe we need to do a humility check upon ourselves. We need to do a compassion check upon ourselves. Every morning when we get up and look in the mirror, we ought to ask ourselves, am I as compassionate as I say I am? A compassionate check. We're not the only ones who did this because we know that one, uh, in Jesus in his last few days, he had a meeting with his disciples. And, and even in that meeting, Jesus says, one of you are going to betray me. And they all said, that self-check, is it me? Is it me? He was a uh, humility. He was humble. And in Isaiah 53, long before his birth, the prophet gave us this history lesson. That is good for this Palm Sunday on the day. It, it, it says, it says Jesus, he's talking about Jesus, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. Humble he came. 
He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows acquainted with grief. And we hid, and we hid as if our faces are from him. He was despised and we esteemed Jesus not. Surely he has borne our griefs. He's carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken. We said he was smitten of God and afflicted. But here is my favorite verse. Uh, because it tells me just how uh, humility he had on the inside. He says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace uh, was upon him and with his stripes. We are healed. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. And yet he opened not his mouth. He was born as a lamb. Worthy is the lamb to be slaughtered as sheep before the shears. Dumb, so he opened not his mouth. But that verse that says he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities and with his stripes we are healed. That's why I choose to worship. Yeah, but I'm not sure about you. You're a little bit quiet on me this morning, but that's okay. I'm going to choose to worship him anyhow. Anyway, the evidence is clear that on this crooked and jagged road there came a king riding on a donkey that was prophesied in Zechariah 9 and 9. He said, rejoice, O, o people of Zion, shout in triumph. O people of Jerusalem, look, your king coming to you. The scripture says he's righteous and he's victorious, yet he is humbled. The scripture says, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's car. So you don't have to believe me. Go to Zechariah 9 and 9. It's right there inside of your Bible. Yes, he's humble and he's filled with humility. And they cried out, Hosanna. If this was just a mere message of scripture, we could leave it here. Go home feeling really good as Jesus is humble. And Jesus is filled with humility. But there's a little more we have to go. We have to get just a little bit deeper into this because there's more to be understood. Humble he came and made himself into man. Born in a manger yet divine and lowly that we might have a, an inheritance. Humility he came and he was wounded for our transgressions. Bruised for our iniquities. And then came healing. Riding on a donkey. He came as a healer. And this is where I, I, you might ought to have a, a shouting station. This is where you might ought to get a little bit happy. Because yes he was humble. And yes he had humility. But he came to give us healing. Here Jesus is coming into Jerusalem about a week before his death is to take place. Jesus has now started to focus on the last of his days. He intensified his relationship with his disciples, beginning to forewarn them of the sacrifice that they would have to endure. He showed great humbleness and humility when he set forth and he washed the disciples' feet. This action was necessary and that it demonstrated his humility and his humbleness. It's saying that one, I, I can give you revelation, but without an application, it's just simply an hallucination. In other words, Jesus had to put into practice what he was doing. He could tell you about it. But he washed their feet to show them. Here, here, here in this upper room, uh, he tell, he he explains to them that yes, he's going to die. And he, he explains to them, and, and this is where they ask, uh, is it me? Uh, is it me that's, that's, that's going to do it? But the truth be, uh, the truth be told, uh, in this parade into town, the people lined the streets looking for a miracle. But what was the miracle they're looking for? Can you get me a, a new house, Jesus? Uh, can you get me a, a new car? Jesus. It's real quiet in here. Maybe because we've been asking for the wrong thing. Maybe our prayers have been, can you buy me this? 
Or can you get me that? How many of us are praying for a revelation in our soul? How many of us are praying for restoration of our soul? How many of us are praying not for material things, but for things that will last? How many of us are praying for a relationship with Jesus? And here they're crying, can you heal this and can you heal that? Can you buy me this? And they're crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Can you hear them crying out, Hosanna, on Sunday? But in less than a week, they're crying out with the same voices, give us Barabbas. Here, if you can picture in your mind, humbled and humility was taken into captivity. Humbled and humility was beaten. Yes, they beat him. They tortured him. They screamed at him. Spat upon him. Humbled and humility was taken into custody. He who rode in town humbled filled with humility, would have to give up the ultimate gift. And they cried, crucify him. Crucify him. What manner of man is this that will fulfill the prophecy even until the point of his death? Who is this man that would ride on a donkey. Well, I've got an answer for you. This man is the son of God. That's who he is. His name is Jesus. And we might as well tell you the rest of the story that when you cry Hosanna, you ought to be crying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for saving a wretch like me. The rest of this passage in Mark 11, verse 1 through 10, could have read just as it is without going any deeper. But when they cried, Hosanna, here comes our Lord. Here comes our Redeemer. Here comes our Restorer. Mm. Yes, it's a story behind that came riding in on a donkey, humbled in humility and healing. He rode in on a donkey, but he was filled with healing as well. He was filled with the healing power of God. You might say, yeah, we, we know that preacher, but uh, we know that, uh, uh, wait a minute, we know he was healing, but uh, uh, what about the healing of your broken leg? Yeah, I'm talking about a different kind of healing. I'm talking about the healing that took place even before the foundation of the world. I'm talking about the healing that took place in the Garden of Eden when man, one man had fallen sin to the temptations of the devil. I'm talking about the healing that surpassed is all healing of your empty wallets and your broken homes. I'm talking about the healing that Jesus had in the garden of Gethsemane and said, Father, your will be done. Oh my, 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 my. I'm talking about Jesus. Yes, he did heal a leper. Yes, he did heal a blind. Yes, but Jesus did heal a man from evil spirit. Yes, he did heal a woman with an issue of blood. Yes, he did heal some of you and whatever was going on in your life. Yes, he's a doctor in a sick room. Yes, he's a lawyer in a courtroom. Yes, he did wake you up this morning cold in your right mind. And the blood is still running warm in your veins. Yes, Jesus did it all. And all to him I owe. He did all of that. But there's one thing that surpasses all that he's done. And it started on one Friday afternoon. You ought to get a little happy now. But this is when humble and humility came riding into town. And healing was on his mind. Yes, he was humble. Yes, he was full of humility, but when Jesus came riding into town, he came riding in with a healing on his mind. Yeah. 
let, let me slow it down for you. He was humble. We know, born into a humble existence. He was filled with humility. By his stripes, we are healed. But when he came riding into town, he had something else on his mind. He knew he had to go to a cross. But on his mind was your healing. That Friday afternoon, when humble and humility took a beating for the world that no man could it do but Jesus. And on that Friday afternoon, where they had nailed humbleness to his hands and his feet. And humility had a spear placed in his side. And blood came streaming down the cross. When he had no place uh, to lay his head, but in the locks of his shoulders. And he submitted his soul back to God. That's when the healing started. I, my understanding is when he gave up the ghost that all of a sudden uh, this miracle antibiotic uh, touched by God came to heal the world. I heard uh, another cry from the souls that they've been gone on before and they cried out, Hosanna, blessed he is of the rock, uh, blessed be the rock of my salvation. And I heard uh, there was a rumbling uh, and there was a tumbling uh, uh, on a Saturday early before Sunday morning. I heard uh, there was a rumbling uh, and a tumbling uh, and it was early Sunday morning. And all I can say that it was early come Sunday morning. He got up with all power in his hands. Uh, maybe you didn't hear me, but he got up with all power. In his hands. He was humbled, filled with humility, but he had healing on his mind. He came riding in on a donkey, humbled with humility and healing. This is what that Palm Sunday was. And can you imagine he knew then he would have to go to a cross. I believe that every time you cry out, Hosanna, you ought to be crying out, thank you, because he did it just for you. My question My question is, are you humble? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you humble? Say, neighbor, are you filled with humility? Neighbor, if you don't, I know somebody who is. Tell your neighbor, his name is Jesus. Say it like an old Baptist preacher would say, his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Tell him like an old Baptist preacher said, he got up with all power in his hands. This time look at your neighbor and tell him he got up just for you and turn to the other one and say just for you when we cry Hosanna we ought to be crying thank you Jesus for getting up for a wretched man as me Isaiah said, I saw myself, and I said, whoa, wretched man that I am. But if you go on in the scripture, God said he needed someone to go out and tell the people, 
my Bible tells me that Isaiah said, uh, send me, uh, here am I. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, send me, here am I. The doors of this church, it's open. is open because he came humbled with humility and he had healing on his mind. I don't know about you, but he came, yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 I love you, I love you, oh Lord, I love you, Lord, today, yes, Lord. Doors are open. In such a special way. Jesus is saying, I'm waiting right here for you. My arms stretched out wide. Give your life to Jesus. Yes, Lord. I know the devil is trying to hold you back. He said, not now, not now. I love you. But God has said, now is the perfect time to give your life to Christ. You cared for me. I praise you, Lord. I lift you up. Lord, I magnify your name. Yes, Lord. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I was to offer to you and yours to accept. with humility and while riding on the back of a donkey he had your salvation in mind he knew that if he came in as a triumphant king but he would die as a martyr he knew that with on that Sunday when he rode in to Jerusalem that in six days he'd be beaten. Oh my. He'd be taken into custody. He'd be tortured. They even took a crown of thorns 
to humiliate him and pressed it into his head. He came in on this Sunday still with healing and your salvation on his mind. And on that next Sunday, that's where you get the shout. On that next Sunday, he got up. It would have been interesting if he had got up just to get up. But he didn't get up just to get up. I know that when you're retired, you can get up whenever you want. Kind, kind of. You just get up. But Jesus got up for a life of eternity just for you. He got up with a purpose, and that is for your salvation. He got up just for you. I'm just going to ask you just one more time to do one more thing for me. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, he got up just for me. You ought to get, you know, get, get, a, little, get a little sassy with it. And, and tell your neighbor, say, he got up, baby, just for me. It was for me. He got up. Amen, amen. 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 Listen, listen. Would you stand to your feet? We're just about ready to, to go home. I'm asking that, one, if you can, if you will, you got a little time, um, run and get something to eat, if you would. I, I'm, I'm just asking, if you would support God's word through me at Coming Grove at 2 o'clock today as we go and minister to word, the word there for 184 years. We're, we're coming on 146. We were established in 1878. So they're at 184 years before the Emancipation Proclamation took place. So over there, they're celebrating both a history of enslavement and freedom. Oh, isn't that something? We once were enslaved, but thank God we are free. Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all got that or not. I'm talking about we once were enslaved by sin, but now we are free through Jesus Christ. He died just for us. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Please join us. Father, we thank you once again for this discussion and to the revelation of who you are. Humbled, filled with humility. Father, just make us humbled. Give us humility on the inside. And Father, that when we walk, we can touch and heal broken spirits, Father. You're in us. And Father, you have given in us the ability to lift as opposed to put down. So when we walk out of these doors of this church, Father, we ought to walk out with a healing spirit, with a humble countenance, with humility filled, all within us. And so, Father, we thank you now for the example of being humble. We thank you for the example of feel, being filled with humility. And we thank you, Father, that one, you've given us the gift, Father, to go out and lift up broken spirits. And we ask now that you put a hedge of protection all around us. Protect us as we go. Give us the glow of Moses that others can ask, what is it about you that is different? We can simply say, we've had a time with the Lord who lives within me. Let me introduce you to him. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you are breathing on the inside of this church, I'm going to ask you to say amen. Amen. amen, amen. And amen again. Be blessed.